we had a kind of a, a, a ballpark uh, concept on how much we should spend for saving kilos. I mean, say, we, we may spend up to 100 euros for saving a kilo. Meet Katja and Fabio and their Shoni Design Aero 1500. This custom built fast catamaran is full of smart design choices and weight saving ideas. After thousands of hours of work, they are now sailing in the Mediterranean. Weighing just 8 tons at a length of 50 meters, they are cruising with speed and comfort. Join us on a full tour of this modern spaceship and its wonderful owners. Welcome to Boat Life is Best. Here you'll find interviews with sailors about their boats and their life on board. Ranging from family sailing to solo sailing, from absolute beginners to sailing legends, on big yachts and small boats, and from brand new to old school. If you like boat tours and conversations with sailors, definitely subscribe to the channel. This is the boat is a shoning design, a Arrow 1500. And uh, yeah, we chose for this because it's a catamaran first, of course. That, that's what we wanted to have, but it's a catamaran that can sail. I mean, which is uh, different than most, uh, I would say, charter catamarans, where the sailing is less uh, pleasurable, I would say. So it's not the most spacious, it's not the most luxurious, but it's a uh, good size, although it's very light, and that's what uh, we try to keep it uh, mostly. And light, simple, and with good uh, sailing capability, especially with little wind, because that's the ni it's nicer to sail with little wind than with a lot of wind. Everything, everybody can sail with a like, lot of wind, but then it's uncomfortable, we think. Yeah, we'll have a look at the, the interesting features that you have here. So, uh, yeah, if you tell me like your sail setup or... Yeah, my sail setup is, uh, again, simple. The basic sails, we have a set tucking jib and a mainsail. I mean, about 40 square meter or a little bit less of jib and uh, 80 square meter of mainsail. Those are the working sail, let's say the standard. Then in front there normally we put a, let's call it code zero, cruising code zero, whatever is for light wind, not really a close hold, but I mean from 50 degrees apart we can sail. Uh, and that we double basically the area of the sail for uh, little wind, uh, up, not really upwind, but downwind as well, we can use it. Or we can also have, uh, we just got a new uh, asymmetrical spinnaker quite big for very light hairs from behind where yeah it's comfortable to say like that and uh, yeah we, we tried it once and, and we also have a, a symmetrical spinnaker from our old boat also under 60 square meter which you can set it up I mean on the Caterman is without a spinnaker pole so it is relatively easy I mean with a sock but it's a little bit more complicated with right? two guys two sheets and so on I mean, the asymmetrical spinnaker is of course easier with just two yes. sheets and that's it reasonable amount of solar panels you never have enough so i mean we have about two kilowatts and most days it, uh, is okay i would say i mean uh, of course if you get two days without sun I mean, we need to start saving or, or, or warming up less the water we do most things with, uh, with electrical stuff also cooking is all electric uh, we, used, we should have also an electric uh, outboard motor for the dinghy, which can, uh, is under repair at the moment. So we have a petrol on board, but otherwise we, we, we were trying to avoid that as well. But we don't have gas. That's the most important thing. This is also for uh, ventilation, I mean, inside the boat. I mean, mostly, I mean, this is a boat we, we don't go very often in the harbor. So it's designed to stay cool at anchor. And for that, you just need to open up the front of the boat. So all these uh, six windows there, which are, those are no standard deck hatches, which are used like windows. And you can open them all and you have the whole, your, your breeze uh, uh, going through the boat. And that makes you cool both in the saloon and also the cockpit, at least in, behind the door. Because, I mean, the solar panels on top of the roof, I mean, they're warming up a little bit the roof, but I mean, within reasonable things in the summer. And then we have uh, dagger boards, of course. Yeah. I mean, they are not uh, the biggest dagger board uh, that you can have. They are they cruising dagger boards, I would call, so they, they go down this much. We made this. We copied the system from another catamaran where you can have. Uh, I mean, we, you don't have any other. You don't use any line back stoppers or anything. Just uh, this uh, self-tailing things, which yeah, makes it uh, quite easy. Very nice, yeah. simple setup. Yeah, and also for the sailing things, or everything is at the mast. I mean, the only thing the, 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 the main sheet and the and the jeep sheet are, are, are of course coming back, and the traveler is uh, com controlled from the back. But for everything else, you need to go at the mast, the halyard, and we've seen our age. I mean, uh, electric wind for the halyards 
here and then at the green for the main sheet. Yes, so you do all the, the raising and the reefing, everything you do uh, at the most. Here. I mean, yes. this idea of trying to bring everything back, I mean, uh, you fill up the cockpit with ropes uh, and I don't... At the end you end up going on the mast anyway, I mean, I think. It's a one, I would say, a canoe boom. I mean, the idea is to have it, and it looks nice, but it's also functional, uh, uh, very practical, I would say, to avoid to have all this uh, la lazy cloth uh, or lee cloth for the, for the, with the lazy jacks uh, flapping around and so the cover slides on top of it but the, the sail is contained a little bit in the boom and the boom is basically it's a carbon pipe and then a shell of sandwich to hold the, the things and uh, yeah looks nice and it functions very well yeah. and uh, the mast is like a standard the aluminium mast, mast? Yeah, standard aluminium mast i mean uh, we, in our uh, uh, trade-off between cost and weight and performance the, the carbon fiber mast was uh, we thought excessively expensive uh, and of course uh, we, we had a kind of a, a, a ballpark uh, concept on how much we should spend for saving kilos I mean they, we, we may spend up to 100 euros for saving a kilo and I think with the mast uh, it costs much more than that for the, key, for the few tens of kilos that you end up saving so that was not worth of course, there are other advantages, but at the same time, yeah, it's... Uh, you have to draw the line somewhere. Exactly. At some point, the money is finished. So, yes. I mean, and that's the master was, one, was a little bit too, too, too far. Yeah, that's and you have a, a special helm. You have a helm without, without, a, without, without, a, wheel. without a wheel. Well, actually, well, there, is a, there is a wheel, an electrical wheel that we have for pilot here. <clears throat> but mostly, say, we don't... I mean, we don't steer the boat almost ever. I mean, okay, we have the helm stuff here and the tillers, uh, which... I would say we use them mostly in emergency. I mean, of course, uh, we have tried to get some pleasure by sitting here, but in most cases, I would say for our situation, I think it's, it's limited the pleasure. I prefer to check the autopilot and sit uh, from inside the boat. Then, uh, then here we stay mostly for maneuvering. I mean, uh, because that's the, only, the best way to stand up here and get some visibility because the boat is large, very difficult to see. Where, where it finishes, but here you can have an, uh, someone on the front there to tell you where if you dock. But most cases, I mean, this is the starboard side is the one where you tend to dock if, you, if you're going there. Yeah. Nice, and you have a very big open living area here. Yeah, this is a four meter wide cockpit and uh, yeah, two meter table, which uh, we fold down to things, which can accommodate uh, enough guests if when we have them or on board or from, or from somewhere else. It's, yeah, it's my, and then okay, I can hang my hammock here, I mean. <laughs> yeah, it's hanging here. That's your favorite spot to be in? This is my favorite spot. I take it out now, at least here, so it can move, but. And uh, yeah, from here then, I mean, it's not um, completely open to the inside. I mean, we have this door, we can open it a little bit more. But it's not really... Yes. This is about a meter opening and uh, I would say that's enough for getting some passage and things and then, okay, can we get on this? The thing is it's sitting basically on the, on the back. I don't have Davids or, or anything. I mean, we use it... Uh, we have tried with the boom extension things. Now we, we do it with the topping lift and I think it's practical enough and uh, it's solidly standing there. You just have two ropes to hold it there. Yep. And also simple. Okay, so now we go inside and uh, yeah, see what uh, the inside of this large catamaran looks like. Um, I think we're now in the main living area. Can you tell, tell us about that and how you set it up? Uh, yeah, well, I like my kitchen. So uh, the main living area is basically a kitchen. Fabio says that this is a catamaran, uh, which is actually a kitchen with uh, two hulls. Um, so that's the, uh, the kitchen area, kitchen island. Um, we are cooking uh, all electrical. There is a, an induction uh, in one of the cupboards. Two standard uh, fridges. So let's say that is, uh, yeah, in my opinion, uh, the most important part of the boat. The most important part of the boat. A nice open kitchen. Exactly. Lots of where, where, um, and these are just uh, your standard uh, kitchen cupboards uh, from home. So it's, um, it works just it works, at yeah. home. Um, except, of course, that I only have a very small inverter. So I can only run one electrical appliance at a time, which is not really to my liking, but then 
uh, there are always compromises to be made. Always compromises to be made, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, let's say, navigation area, this is basically where, uh, where, where we spend the time when we are um, um, sailing. It's uh, fly-by-wire, so everything is, uh, is, is, is electronic. You have an amazing view from here inside as well, with like all the windows all around and all the way to the other side as well, like to the back, it's almost like 360 degrees It It, it open, is. Yeah. Um, we, um, let's say we designed the inside ourselves and we pushed the uh, the side panels as mm. far as possible up. So we have this, I don't know, what is it, five meters? That depends on where you measure. Yeah, yeah, maybe five and a half meters from uh, from one side to the other side to get that uh, as, as much as possible. The only thing that breaks your view is the, uh, is the bathroom, yeah. which is uh, probably the... Uh, the exceptional thing of the catamaran, it only has one bathroom and it is on um, yeah, on saloon level. And why did you make this uh, design choice? Yeah, well that, that, that is uh, Fabio who designed yeah. it because he got fed up of uh, unplugging uh, 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 anything in the toilet. Uh, so this toilet, there are no pumps, yes. there's a holding tank. Uh, so let's say whatever you do in the toilet falls down by gravity. Uh, and the holding tank is above water level, so the only thing you have to do is open a valve and everything uh, can come out when uh, when the uh, it's possible yeah and then we have like of course like the the two holes um how have you set them up we have like an owner's hole on one side and the other one more for guests or yeah well yeah we have our bed on the uh, on the port side the left hand yes. side ah. i thought i would uh, do some public science ah the sabuki <laughs> road <laughs> exactly uh, we'll put that one in the in the link. Yeah. So this is uh, let's say this is uh, one of the uh, four uh, double beds. Um, yeah. Standard uh, 160 wide. So I've got a standard IKEA uh, mattress. And uh, well, at the moment it looks like this because the water maker it doesn't do what it's supposed to be doing. Yes. So the water maker is well, at least some parts of the water maker are back there. Yeah. Exactly. Um, you have the. Uh, and you have two the diesel pumps. engines. Yeah, two Nani 38 horsepower. Um, just diesel. We, uh, for a very, very short time, we considered uh, putting uh, one electrical yep. so that we would have a hybrid system. Uh, it was already complicated to build this boat from scratch and we did not want to complicate it any further. Um, who knows, maybe in 20 years time it's going to be an upgrade. Because it, it, I think we don't believe in full electrical, but one electrical and one diesel, that could be the way to go. Yeah. Uh, but at the moment, um, yeah. Just two nanny diesels. Two nanny diesels, uh, yes. 38 horsepower. Yes. This yeah. is the uh, thing that I, the multi cooker that I use as an oven. Uh, here we have the water maker. The pumps are down here. The washing machine is uh, is running. It's running. Enough electricity today to. Uh, yeah, it was uh, fine weather, and finally we managed to get the water maker up and running. So it's not a problem. Our uh, our bedroom. And then up front, we have got uh, the shed. The shed. I think uh, a lot of uh, boat owners will be jealous of how <laughs> big the shed is. <laughs> and yep. well, one of the things we also did, we decided that we we, um, we would like to use the space. So we made the, um, uh, let's say, the, the companion way as narrow as possible, which I think is 55 centimeters. The important thing was, of course, that the washing machine would fit. Uh, so <laughs> and It's good that you thought about that um, beforehand. Uh, yes. But in the end, um, so only one staircase, um, and as I said, only one toilet up there. There's here, yep. it's basically the same as on the other side. Yeah, so here you have like a nice guest room. Exactly, same uh, same idea. Standard bed, two meters by, by 160. And um, we have... Uh, windows on the side. Yeah, yeah, windows on the side uh, for the in, the in the bedrooms, but they're not opening. Um, that was an, uh, a choice by us. We do not want any unneeded water inside. Yes. Uh, and unfortunately, we do c usually keep them open. Uh, yeah. Um, so there is ventilation, uh, but you can leave open <coughs> uh, the hatches and it doesn't rain in. Um, no hatches on the uh, deck. Mm -hmm. First of all, because when you're walking on deck, it's not nice to be walking on hatches. Uh, secondly, um, it heats up. A hatch on their hatch is much much warmer than under this uh, sandwich um, and thirdly uh, you don't need the light so yep. there, there is no reason actually to have kind of hatches in what I would call uh, the corridor 
Yeah, during the day you're not really spending any time here, so... You don't spend any time yeah. at all. Um, so this is uh, another um, bedroom. I mean, these are, again, standard, uh, standard mattresses. Um, I think the whole width is uh, 2 meter 20. Yeah, they're very roomy beds uh, this way, yeah. <laughs> yes, and you could... Um, I mean, of course, you could put them together and you can have a double uh, bed, but you could also have a double bed turned 90 degrees so that you have your feet up front and the, uh, uh, and, and the head in the back. Depending yep. a little bit on how the, the travel is going, yep. um, how you want to sleep. I like these as well, like no doors, but... Uh, <laughs> well, nice this is uh, uh, another yep. IKEA. I think our house was IKEA and the boat was IKEA. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We all have we have one door, eh? the bathroom door. That's the only door you have on board. Yeah. That's a, a cool fact as well. Yeah. Doors away, and they stop the ventilation. So in the end, that's yeah. what really needed. Um, this is the uh, the hanging cupboard and the yeah the uh, the paddle board and some other stuff, and then the sail and sail is uh, up front. Yes, loads of sails and toys. But you told me like this is not even your first well, kind of home built boat. You already did a whole tour uh, around the world, or. At least did some sailing as well and uh, built your own boat already. Yeah. Um, so yeah, can you tell me about those adventures? Uh? Yeah, I think we were young and crazy then. We, had, uh, we, 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 we thought we had a lot of time. No, we had, a lot, we had probably more time than we had now. And uh, yeah, instead of saving and buying a second-hand uh, boat at a certain point, uh, we decided, yeah, we could maybe we, we build it ourselves. We build it even a relatively big, a 47 foot, uh, from the start. Uh, Samoa and yeah seven years of our life I mean the life before children <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah because and as soon when our, <laughs> our daughter was born and then the boat had to go in the water because there was no way anyone to, <laughs> to work on it but we made it of course it was kind of finished but then uh, we sailed a little bit around but then while working and then uh, took two years sabbatical and uh, we sailed a couple of years around the Atlantic I mean we went down to Brazil and Cuba, not not much further away than that. It's a nice Atlantic uh, yeah, round a trip. A large Atlantic circle. A uh, large uh, Atlantic circuit. And what about the, the sailing performance? I think uh, you already told me like you try to keep it light. Yeah. Um, and it's of course like more uh, performance oriented catamaran. It's more performance oriented, and yeah, the boat can go very fast. It's more the people inside the boat that they they, they still want to be comfortable. <laughs> and we have, I mean, we, we have not broken the twenty knots uh, uh, speed uh, yet. Got very close. I mean, the, the first time we sailed was 19, the last, uh, last autumn also 19 and a half or something like this. Then the, the code zero decided to explode. But uh, and, yeah, it, it, you, say, it's not what you want, you want to do anyway uh, when you're. We, we are more traveling with the boats at the end. So for us, it's more important to, to be able to sail uh, six knots with, uh, I don't know, less than 10 knots of wind, I mean, or, or, or being able to go a, a little bit close hole with little wind. I mean, if, if the waves start to build up, you don't want to go close hole anyway. And uh, if there's too much wind, yeah, okay. The forces on the boat becomes uh, quite a lot, and then things start breaking, like yeah. the code zero, or <laughs> it, it's, uh, you, I don't, I, you don't, you don't, and let's say, as a cruiser, you do not want to sail fast because that means uh, that you have got waves, right. yeah. it means it's that you have uh, run, uh, you're running a risk with the material. Yeah. No, normally the nicest thing is when there is, I mean, the wind picks up a little bit and then suddenly you, do, you don't notice it that you're sailing 10 knots. Yeah, yeah. I think exactly. And, this is, this, is, uh, and yeah. this is still very, mostly still yeah. very comfortable. Yeah, I think it's 10, ten knots 12, is really... Then when you go beyond 12 knots, then you, okay, the movements are getting a little bit uh, rougher, but depends, of course, on the waves. I mean, uh, the waves are coming, I mean, yeah. and we have not sailed really in the open ocean with the long waves. Probably there you can go faster for longer time. I, I don't know. I, I, I hope so. I mean, when we're going yeah. across, so maybe yeah. uh, the Atlantic. You have to find it out what it yeah, is like. Yeah, we find yeah. out. But I mean, in the short sea that you can find in the Mediterranean, we have been sailing in the North Sea. I mean, yeah, it gets very uncomfortable very easily. Yeah. Cool. And uh, yeah, why did you choose for boat life? How did you get to that? Like, uh, I don't know. We met on a boat. So, I mean, it, it is. A boat is. <laughs> uh, we are a boat. We, I mean, except for the period where we were raising children and, 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 uh, and, and working, uh, both of us, uh, then of course, the, then there is, we didn't have time for the boat, but I mean, uh, we, we met on a boat and we found always interesting boats and uh, yeah, building or sailing, uh, as I said, it was nice to go with the three children, two years with the boat, that was also part of uh, the way we raised them up, and we think it's, it's, a, it's a good life, I mean, you, you go around, you meet people, 
you, you, you have a different cross cut of, 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 of society. Yeah, so the Shonings are like, yeah, they're home built catamarans, so at least you can buy the plants and from there on you yeah. decide how you get it built. But you can, of course, you maybe decide to get them built in a yard. I mean, uh, because they had built already one similar boat, I mean, the same boat, but then the 12 meter version. So the yard in Germany, Balticat. At the end, yeah, it, it was not an easy process, but we, we got the boat, let's say. I mean, uh, most of, I mean, we could sail away from the yard, then we still had to put quite a lot of hours uh, of our work on it. But, uh, yeah, it, it is not is easy it? to find uh, no. the right builder in the right place. I mean, because, uh, I mean, Shoning are built all, all, all over the world, mostly, I would say, Australia and uh, quite a few in South Africa. And then many are, are, are real, real home builder, but we didn't have, we didn't think. I mean, the amount of hours, I mean, that you can need to put on a boat like this is, is we, we are too old for that. Yes, yeah. with the I experience say, from the first boat. Experience for the first boat, where we, yeah, we, I think the first boat we took what was eight, nine thousand hours, something yeah. like this. I mean, in seven years, and. So, yeah, okay, you can, and then why working mostly, so at, uh, at the end there was uh, holidays, weekends and this kind, and this kind of things. Uh, now, uh, this is more hours, I mean, 50% uh, more, and yeah, it takes too much of our time, I mean, even full time, and, and, and I say, our years at this, at this age are getting precious, I mean, yes. you, you never know how many you have, <laughs> so you better start sailing at 60 and yeah. not keep building another three years or yeah. four years and then, and then sail. So, would you ever design and build your own boat? Let us know in the comments. Did you like the interview and tour of this amazing boat and its owners? Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified of any new videos coming up.